Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are continuing on our journey, so to speak. This whole pilgrimage every day is something new, a continual journey. And as we said yesterday, Jesus often in the scriptures it says that he, you know, embarked on a journey. Of course, as we heard uh, Steve was telling us, the long journey, you know, journeys go back all the way from the Old Testament times. That long journey started with Abraham, right? And God sent him on a journey and he said, go to a place that you do not know, you know, and if you're faithful to me, go to this alien land and I will show you and I will bless you. And of course, that was, as we heard, 400 years of this journey. But the most famous journey that people know of isn't the longest one, but it's still very long, and that was the 40-year journey with Moses in the desert leading the people from slavery in Egypt to the Promised Land. And of course, here we are in this place now, Mount Nemo place where we heard that Moses was told, sorry, you're not going there. And you can imagine the frustration that Moses probably felt. Not only was it a long time of 40 years of going through this desert, but more than that, it was a difficult journey for him because as a leader, you know what he had to put up with? The grumblings of the people. People who constantly complained about one thing or another and complained against him. And they made his life miserable. So at the end of this journey, this 40 years of dealing with people that are complaining and moaning and groaning and all this heartache and pain, and he's the one person who has led them through all of this. Of course, God first and foremost with his help. But he is the, the human leader among everyone. And at the very end, God says, no, you're not going. Must have been frustrated for him. And I can imagine as he was standing at wherever we're going to be going to soon to look at that same point, to overlook that whole land of the, the promised land, what was going through his mind? He must have been thinking probably about all that had happened beforehand. Maybe he was trying to forget all the bad stuff, right, as we try to do Let's forget about the bad, let's just remember the good. We're finally here. And even though I can't read the people into this place, let's remember the good. There's something about the human condition that when we come to an end of a journey, that we like to look back and see where we've come from. That's part of the, the human condition. And go over all the good and the bad and, and hopefully remember the good. And one of the things that the times in our lives that is the most obvious that we do this is at the end of our lives. If it's not a quick death that came out of the blue, like a car accident or something, if it's a, a death that we're able to prepare ourselves, most people look back at their lives at the end of their journey. And they look back and they, they think of all the good and the bad that has happened. And in my ministry, I see this a lot with people because I deal with death on a regular basis. And there are two reactions to people, well, it's more than that, but two general reactions that I see with people as they are lying in bed knowing that their time is coming any moment, any day. And there are two extremes. 
One is either looking back at their lives and thinking of all the blessings that have occurred, or looking back and regretting what they did not do. And so it's a perspective of attitude, you know, to look back and see the blessings I have received or what I haven't done. One is focusing on God, and one is focusing on myself. For people who can look back at their lives and say, you know what, Father, I had the best life. God has blessed me immensely. I've seen that many times. Then I've seen the other side. Father, I look back and I realize I didn't do this and I didn't do that and I didn't do that. And they're focusing on themselves, what they didn't do. So one is God-centric and one is egocentric. The one who focuses on God sees all the blessings. The one who focuses on self does not. Where was Moses in this? Was he looking at all the Lord did over those 40 plus years? The blessings that we've had, that I've had. Or is he saying, well, God's not letting me into the promised land, so it's that one thing that I did. And if I didn't do that, he focused on, if I just didn't do that, you know, it would be a better experience. Where was he? Maybe both, perhaps. Where are we? Before we get to the end of our lives, we have the opportunity right now to change our viewpoint. To change our viewpoint when it comes to that time, whether or not we can look back and say, Lord, I have been blessed by you by so many things. Or to say, I didn't do this, and I didn't do that, and I didn't do that. It's just perspective of how we live our lives. And we are not far yet, hopefully, God willing, we are not far yet from that end of our journey. And we still have an opportunity. But I'd like to say this. This came to me last night as to put this in a different perspective. While Moses may have been upset that he didn't get the promised land, the question is, really? Did he not get the promised land? The scripture says that he, did, he just disappeared, right? God took him. We don't have a place where he was buried. We don't know, right? But we would assume that he was taken to heaven. Because at the transfiguration, before the resurrection had happened, right? Who appeared to Jesus? Moses. Moses, Moses and Elijah. Now we know, scripturally speaking, that Elijah was taken up to heaven by God by the chariot. So he attained heaven before the resurrection. Nobody else could, but he did. We can assume then that God did the same for Moses. Because if Moses appeared to Jesus at the transfiguration, then he was with Elijah in the kingdom of heaven also. While everybody else, of course, had to wait until the fruits of the resurrection were given to them. But Moses, given what he endured, God probably gave him that gift to be able to be with him in heaven before the resurrection. Which makes me say, if I were to give you a handful of two pieces of jewelry, this one's costume jewelry, and this one's real diamonds. Which one do you want? There you go. <laughs> you want the real thing. So on Moses, we may look at it and say, poor Moses, he didn't get the promised land. Not true. He did. He got the real one. And was it really God being nasty to say, sorry, I'm not gonna give this to you, I'm taking it away from you? No, I think God actually did something better for him saying, don't worry about this promised land. This isn't the real good one. This one is. And that's what he gave him. So we can look at this story and say at the end of the journey, Moses did indeed go to the promised land. The real one. And this is because the whole point of what God is doing with Moses leading the people to the promised land, he's actually leading them to a greater promised land that will come later on because Jesus, when he came, is the Messiah that was expected to be that, that new Moses who was going to usher in, you know, this new exodus and to this new promised land. And the promised land is the kingdom of heaven. And that is the greatest gift that God has given to us. And as he says in scripture, sell everything you have and focus on that. So our whole lives 
should always be about focusing on the kingdom of heaven. So in the end, we can say we are called to give our whole lives to Jesus Christ, just as he gave his life to us. And if we do that, if we give everything to him without counting the cost, then in the end, we never have to look back on our lives and regret what we didn't do. We can have that positive attitude to say, Lord, my life is full of good and bad both, but in everything it has been a blessing from you. And we can focus on the blessings that God has given us, knowing that even those blessings don't even compare to what he has for us at the end, the blessing of the kingdom of heaven. As we continue on this journey, may we grow in our love for God and each other, and may it inspire us to indeed live our lives and give our lives, everything we have, to God and each other out of love.